All right, we're gonna do the trace of a drop of blood. So we'll start with this sketch of the heart and I'll speed past this part. All right, guys, so here we have an outline of my interpretation of the human heart. So we're gonna walk through the trace of a drop of blood here. So first, let's start identifying some structures. So here we have the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and that's kind of where we're gonna start the trace of a drop of blood. So here you see blood first approaching the heart and it enters into the right atrium. Then we continue down. We must pass through the tricuspid valve to get into the right ventricle. Then we'll go through the pulmonary semilunar valve to get into the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary trunk bifurcates into right and left pulmonary arteries. These pulmonary arteries make their way to the right and left lung. So here we have the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. Right and left lung. Okay, O2 gas exchange takes place here. And then blood returns through the pulmonary veins. and enters the left ventricle. Blood continues downward and passes through the mitral valve. Now we're in the, excuse me, my mistake up here, left atrium, now we're in the left ventricle. I hope that I didn't throw anyone off. We'll recap at the end. So now we pass through the aortic semilunar valve and we're in the aortic trunk. Aortic trunk goes through the arch of aorta or aortic arch and into the body. 
And that's as far as we need to go when we're tracing a drop of blood. So let's kind of recap a little bit. So we have blood returning, right? So it was going towards the body here. It's returning from the body, deoxygenated from superior vena cava is coming up from the head and the upper extremities or the arms and the, and the rest is coming from the inferior vena cava. So it enters in the right atrium, passes through the tricuspid valve to gain entrance to the right ventricle. The right ventricle squeezes and pushes blood through the pulmonary semilunar valve or just pulmonary valve and uh, goes up against gravity uh, through the pulmonary trunk which bifurcates into the right or left pulmonary arteries which then goes to the lungs for gas exchange so it releases the co2 and picks up o2 makes his way back through the pulmonary veins and uh, do make note that I've only drawn two pulmonary veins here, but there's actually four, just in case you get tested on that. And we'll talk about some test questions at the end. Uh, so now we're in the left atrium. Remember we made that correction. Uh, and then we pass through the mitral valve. And now we're in the left ventricle. Uh, we, again, the left ventricle squeezes and we go up through the aortic semilunar valve or aortic valve. We're now in the aortic trunk. We go through the arch of aorta and down into the body. So let's talk about a couple of test questions very quickly here. Uh, sometimes they'll ask you, what does the right side or the left side of the heart represent? So here I'll do a dotted line. This is the right side of the heart. And the right side of the heart, since the oxygen is, since the blood is not oxygenated, excuse me, it's on its way to the lungs. And the medical term for lungs is pulmonary. So we call it pulmonary circulation or the pulmonary circulatory side. So in case they ask you, you know, which side of the heart is uh, responsible for pulmonary circulation, right, left, both, whatever, pulmonary circulation. And then the left side of the heart is already oxygenated, so it's on its way to the body. It's on its way to the system. So we call it systemic circulation. Okay, those are two good questions to look out for. Other type of question is, what is the first branch of the, of the aortic? How would they word it? There's two ways, two type of questions that are asked here. What is the first branch of the aorta is not listed here. First branch is right after this aortic semilunar valve. There's tiny little branches here called coronary arteries. And uh, so that's the first branch of the aorta is the coronary arteries. Now, don't let them trick you if they say, what is the first branch of the arch of aorta? Now we're talking about up here. So we're, since we're going this way, the first branch is this. And this is called the brachial cephalic trunk, right? And brachial means it's going to the arms because this branch is going to the arms, at least the right arm. And cephalic, cephal means towards head. This one's going towards the head. So it's a trunk because just like a tree trunk branches, here's a branch. So brachiocephalic trunk is the first branch of the arch of aorta. And if you guys wanna know these two, which are very rarely asked, this is the left coronary artery, cause on its way up. And this is the left subclavian artery. So where's the right side? Well, here was the branch, right? So here's the right coronary artery and right subclavian artery. All right. But again, this is a most common question. Is first branch of the arch of aorta or first branch of the aorta? They very rarely ask about these two, but now you know. Okay, if they ask, uh, you know, what is the first blood vessel of systemic circulation? So we're talking about the left side of the heart. So the first blood vessel of systemic circulation is the aorta. 
right? It's the first blood vessel, is the aorta. A very tricky question that always, you know, people tend to get wrong often is what, it's, what is the last blood vessel of pulmonary circulation? Well, you have to, pulmonary circulation is whatever's coming from the pulmonary, from the lungs. So it's actually the pulmonary vein. The last blood vessel of pulmonary circulation is the pulmonary veins. Even though the blood is oxygenated, it's still coming from the pulmonary system. So it's the last blood vessel.